let's try to do this problem. First, we'll read the problem carefully. It says, what is the electric field at the lower right-hand corner of the square shown below? So here's the uh, place they're talking about, the lower right-hand corner. And we want to find the electric field at this point, which is created by these three charges. There's a plus Q here, minus 2Q on this corner, and a plus Q on this corner. Now each one produces its own electric field, and using what's called the superposition principle, you can just add them. Now the electric field is a vector, so you have to add them uh, vectorially or by components, but at the end you'll get an expression that shows the total electric field at this point. Okay, so let's get started. We will uh, do part A, which is to find the electric field. Now everything is in terms of variables, so we're going to, well, there are no numbers. So the best thing is to first label these charges. So why don't I call this uh, 1, uh, this 2, and then this 3. Okay, so let's focus on 1. If we want to know what the electric field is from 1, remember the rule is electric field lines go away from a positive charge. And for negative charges, the electric field lines go t into it or towards it. So if we were to draw the a point charge for this 1, the electric field would go away like this in every direction, right? So if we were interested in finding the electric field uh, at this point, it'll be going up and to the right. If this the point was we were interested here, it would go uh, down and to the left. What we're interested in is here. This what the electric field due to this charge is at this point. So in that case, it's very uh, clear that at this point, it's just going down. And we'll label that as E1. Now, the electric field due to charge 2 is going to look different because it's negative. The electric field lines will go towards the charge like this in every direction, towards the charge. And we are interested in what this field is uh, at this point right here. So at this point, it's going to go towards the negative charge and point up at 40 to 5 degrees, and we'll call that E2. For the third charge, same idea. It's a positive charge. The electric field lines will be radiating away from the charge, right, everywhere. Uh, and at this point that we're interested in, it will be going towards, completely towards the right. Now, never mind the, uh, the, the size of these arrows. I don't have them correct. They should be all, they should be different sizes. Um, so this is going to be that way. Now, if we do want to worry about the sizes, the distances and the charge determine the size. So these charge one and three have the same charge value and at the same distance from this point so they should have the same size it's a different direction but the same size now the, the electric field e2 due to minus the minus 2q charge is in terms of magnitude stronger because it has a higher charge value but it's also further away so it's not clear uh, at least initially what this, so we're not going to worry about the size, we'll let the, uh, the math figure this one out, okay? So our job now is to find the total electric field by adding uh, these three fields up, E1 plus E2 plus E3. And we're gonna, these are all vectors, so you have to put the vector arrows on top of them, or else they're, they're not vectors. 
And to do this now, we have to add each component separately. And then we'll sum them, we'll put them in, okay? So we can write this E total as E1 X plus E2 X plus E3 X times I hat, that's in the X direction, plus E1 Y plus E2 Y plus E3 Y times J hat. Okay? So let's figure this out. Um, E1 X. X plus E2 X plus E3 X. So I'm just going to look at the, the X components now. What is E1 X? Well, you can see that E1 X, there is no X components, all in the negative, uh, all in the Y direction. So this is going to be equal to 0. E1 X is equal to 0. What about E2 X? Well, E two X does have an X component. Is the X component? If you want to uh, zoom in here, will be equal to. This is what it looks like. E two X. Remember, you draw a little triangle, and then the Y component will be that. So that'll be E two X, and that'll be E two Y. Now uh, E2x is, is pointing in the negative, on, to the left, in negative direction, so it'll have a minus sign. So minus, right? And we're gonna take minus times the magnitude of E2 times whether it's a sine or cosine. Okay, now what do we mean? Well, if this was right here, theta, 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 that would be the theta we're talking about. Of course, this is a, uh, a 45 degree triangle, so we'll call this uh, 45 degrees. Uh, not a triangle, sorry. This is a square, so if this angle be 45 degrees, and E2x is adjacent to this angle, so we're interested in cosine cosine 45 degrees okay so right now we have uh, e2 x e2 is the magnitude the, the minus sign tells you it's going to the left e2 is the magnitude and then the cosine 45 gives you the x component of that magnitude okay now last is e3 x e3 x as you can see here is completely in the x direction uh, from here so there is no y component and it's positive so what we're just going to do is put plus e3 the magnitude okay now we're going to put in what the magnitudes e2 and e3 are this is where we use coulomb's law um, involving k's and q's so we have equals minus k and we're talking about the Q2 charge, which is over here. And this is, has charge minus 2Q. Now, we already accounted for the fact that it's a minus, right? That's why it's going towards up and towards the left. So we don't want to double count. We're just going to put down the fact that it's 2Q, okay? Again, the minus sign has already been taken into account here. So we don't want to put another minus sign. That'll be uh, a double negative and cause problems. So that's the formula. Remember the formula for uh, Coulomb's law is a q over r squared. That's the Coulomb field for the for a point charge. And we're gonna put k here, the charge of q2, and then the distance um, from charge the second charge all the way to that corner 
Now, what is this distance? We're talking this distance here to here. It's not A, okay? It's not A, if you remember, for a square, a diagonal of a right triangle at 40, 45 degrees, the diagonal is A root 2. So this distance here is actually A root 2 going from one corner to the other. And that's what we'll put down into this denominator. A root 2, oh, the whole thing squared. And then cosine 45 degrees. And then for E3, the charge is just positive Q. So KQ over the distance squared, which in this case would be A squared. Okay, we're going to continue evaluating uh, the, the expression. So I'm going to take the 2 out. So I have minus 2KQ. And then I'm going to square the bottom. When I square the bottom, I have uh, root 2 becomes 2, and then a be becomes a squared. Now, what's cosine of 45? Cosine of 45, if you remember your, uh, your right triangle, reference triangle, uh, it is 1, 1, root 2, 45. And so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine 45 degrees is uh, 1 over root 2. Instead of putting in the calculator and getting this one, we want something that's uh, a nice expression. So we'll put 1 over root 2 down here, like that, for cosine 45. Cosine 45 is 1 over root 2. And then we'll copy the next term, kq over a squared. And we continue with the, our simplifications. These twos will cancel, and you have a root two on the bottom. Uh, they both both terms have a kq over a squared. So whenever you see that, you can factor it out to simplify. So if I put kq over a squared, I factor that out, pull that out. I'll have what's left is um, this is minus. 1 over root 2 will be left, and then this will be 1 that's left on this side. I'm just going to make it neater, so minus 1 minus 1 over root 2. I switched places there just to make it look nicer. Okay, so that's the total x component due to the three charges. Now we want to work on this, the total y component, and it's going to be very similar. So we're, we we want to know what uh, e one y plus e two y plus e three y equals. So e one y. So you can see e one is comp has no x components. All of it's in the y, and it's going down, so it's negative. So it's going to be negative times e one the magnitude. Okay. Next. E2 does have a wall, uh, x component, so it's not completely in the y, but it's going, the y component, we, we've shown here already, it's going up, so it's going to be positive E, positive E2y. And then last is E3. Now, E3 has no y component completely in the x, so we'll just put a zero there for it. Okay. Now, just like before, we'll, we'll write down for E2, it's going to be equal to a hypotenuse times a sine or cosine. Okay, so in this case, it'll be since it's E2y is opposite 45, it'll be sine E2 sine of 45 degrees. Okay, now we're ready to put in uh, the Coulomb's uh, law, negative sign, K, and then the charge of E1, 
E1 is positive Q. So we'll put Q and then over the distance to, to the E1, which is A, A squared. So that's E1. Uh, next, we want the magnitude E2. E2 is is negative 2 cubed, but we don't want to count this as a negative anymore. We already took into account the minus sign from these directions. So it's just positive 2 cubed. Okay, positive 2 cubed over the distance from E2 to that point, which again is going to be A root 2, and then you square that times sine 45 degrees. Okay, um, if I continue evaluating this, I get minus kq over a squared um, plus 2kq, I take it out of the parentheses there, I square the bottom, which I'll get 2a squared, and then sine 45, just like before, it's sine 45 equals cosine 45. So it's be 1 over root 2. And we continue along. Uh, these two uh, these two of terms cancel like that. And if you want to uh, write it nice more nicely, we take out uh, factors that are the same. In this case, it's kq over a squared. And then write 1 over root 2 minus 1, right? Because this is this is the minus 1, and then, then this is 1 over root 2. And that's what I have there, OK? OK, so now we're ready to see what this looks like, the total electric field looks like. We'll put uh, E total vector. Remember, it's equal to E um, total X, which is just found, times I hat plus E total Y times J hat. And if I put it in the expression uh, above, we have KQ over A squared, 1 minus 1 over root 2 times I hat. Plus k q over a squared uh, one over root two minus one uh, j hat. Now you no notice that these two terms are actually just opposite of each other, right? Because if I put a minus sign here, this becomes one minus one over root two, which is negative of this. So we can actually simplify a little bit better more by uh, saying, writing out kq over a squared, pulling out this, and then in case, then we'll have i hat minus j hat, right? Because the second term, the j hat term, is minus the other. So this is the most simplified form of this uh, electric field. Now, we know that this, this expression is positive, right? Everything is assumed positive. This expression is positive because one, 1 over root 2 is 0.7. 1 minus 0.7 is a positive number. And then what we have is uh, two components, one going to the I direction and the other going to the negative direction. So if we were to draw this E total field, um, it's that they both had the same size uh, magnitude, one and one, so they're 45 degrees, and it'll go down like this, right? Because one is going to the right and the other is going down to the minus. So this would be what E total will look like. It'll be going down uh, and to the right. The last um, part of the question is part B. And it says, what 
force on charge Q placed at that point? What is the force on a charge Q placed at a point? Well, that is a very simple thing to do. What we're going to um, do is use the equation to go from force to electric field. So in this case, part B, to know what the force is, we're just going to take the charge Q. That's what they said. If you're going to put a charge Q at that point, um, then you times the total electric field. So, so it's a very simple step. You're just going to take the expression above and multiply by Q again. So you have KQ squared over A squared, uh, 1 minus 1 over root 2. Um, I hat minus, oops, I hat minus J hat. There, those will be the two ex num two uh, answers of this problem. Let me just go ahead and box these. So they look nice. That would be the final answer uh, right there.